Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com You know what my friends, there's some really sick things out there And most of them are found in our video games Oh joy, isn't that fun to spend our hard earned cash only to put the disc in, turn on the TV and be completely grossed out enough that we can't even enjoy our mac and cheese Spent 15 minutes making that. 15! Anyway, sorry, off topic and off track. Let's talk about some video game enemies that really make our stomach turn, that make our skin cringe, and of course make us do little, little vomits in our toilet. Don't know why I did the baby voice there, but there we go. But you know what, I'm gonna cut the intro because I bet you're sick of them. <laughs> With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game enemies that will make you sick. Number 10, Silent Hill 3, Split Worm. When it comes to all things comedy, there's usually no simpler delight than putting human teeth on things. I mean, sharks, babies, dogs, you name it. It's generally worth a lowbrow chuckle or two, right? No, just me. Well, nightmare worms from a horror dimension, though, definitely should not have teeth. Specifically, nightmare worms that have a protective layer that splits open like a horrible banana to reveal a gross phallic worm head, which also has human-like teeth. In the messed up logic of Silent Hill, there's probably some interpretation to be had here, right? In the real world, though, it's a straightforward fleshy dick with a whole load of pearly whites that wants to chow down on you. Freud would definitely have a field day with this one. In boss fight terms, it's relatively easy. Just wait for the big old maw to open up and fire away. No worse than the split head from the first game. But in terms of sheer grossness, yeah, it's pretty much an armored dick with teeth whiter than your face after seeing this and the shock just absorbing you. Yeah, it's not nice. Number 9. Prototype. Mother. You have to feel sorry for Elizabeth Green, the human part of the mother boss in Prototype. Forced into being a test subject for the red light virus, Green becomes a perfect host for it, going on to produce multiple strains from it. Much like Alma from the Fear series, Green becomes an unwilling participant in the events that lead to the mass outbreak that infects New York. Of course, that sentiment does quickly disappear when you see what Green, who renames herself as Mother, turns into for the final boss fight. A giant, oozy, blood-red mass that looks like a tick after it's gorged itself silly on the finest of bloods. Which is bad enough, if not for the gross tendrils that she also sprouts as well. So now you've got an enormous, bloated mass of blood and other gubbins waving tentacles around as well as trying to poison New York. Yeah, it doesn't look nice and it always looks like it's about to burst, just keep it away. Number 8. Outlast. Richard Traeger. Now, to be fair, you could really pick any of the nasty, sick little puppies in the Outlast games to fill this list. I mean, you've got mad priests, incestuous families, genital slicing nutballs, and more. But Richard Rick Traeger is a special kind of sicko who was one before ending up as a patient in Mount Massive's asylum. An executive working for Murkoff before being committed, Traeger is one of those sociopathic schemers that abuses his position, in that he raped another employee and forced her to abort the resulting pregnancy or be fired. If that wasn't bad enough, which it definitely is, he then tries to date rape a mitigations officer coming to investigate a complaint about him. And if that weren't bad enough, he then stabs the pregnant victim in the stomach several times with a pair of scissors. So it's no real surprise that he ends up here in the asylum. And did it help him in the slightest? No, it definitely did not. It actually just gave him carte blanche to enact out sick experiments and digit extraction on unsuspecting inmates and investigative journalists. But he does get properly total recall though, which is kind of nice. Number 7. Resident Evil 6 Lepotica this is disgusting. These gross, bloated corpses are covered in holes and pores that from a visual perspective are downright disgusting. But from an oh god it gets worse perspective, these pores then release a new strain of virus that infects people and turns them into zombies. How lovely. It turns out that the squishy, holy body is actually its best defense as well, because shooting it will actually cause more gas to release, meaning that you'll have to be still and aim for the head-like-ish area. That's right, you have to stand still whilst this mass of itty-bitty holes is creeping its way towards you. You have to root yourself down to the spot and play marksman on something that is covered in tiny holes and filled with gas and god knows what else, and every second that you're not hitting it in the head, it is getting closer. No thank you, please. Number 6. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice The Headless 
Surprisingly, From Software's Eastern effort doesn't actually retain that inherently gross factor that Dark Souls and Bloodborne wear with pride. It's more Asian archetypes for bosses, Hanyo masks and Naginatas, dragons and folklore. But then along come the Headless. Said to be the fallen warriors of the same in-game item that you receive from each one, these foes are not fun fights to take on, and stumbling upon one is like walking into a waking nightmare. They're also bloody tough as well, but challenge aside, the general atmosphere around a Headless is massively oppressive and gross as well. They cause a huge buildup of the terror ailment, as I'd imagine that a headless beast would, yet that's not all, because it's when they grab you that the sick bit comes in. A headless will, with great gusto I might add, will try and remove a mythical ball inside you that is said to contain the soul. From where, you might wonder, well it's not like the wolf has a multitude of pockets about his person, unless you count nature's pocket. That's right, a headless will try without any finesse to remove your soul from your butt. That's just nasty. Number 5. Manhunt Pixie so Manhunt is not a pleasant game. Of course, you don't really need me telling you that. It's like telling you that water is wet and don't do that sciencey thing where you go, well, technically it's actually the load of whatever. You know what I mean by that. Yet over time, you get yourself acquainted with all the various gangs and crazies that inhabit Starkweather's violent playground and you think you've got to hold on things. Well, that is until you meet Pixie. This pig face wearing animalistic cannibalistic man baby is a grotesque sight to behold. Wearing nothing but a pig faced grin and a chainsaw, Pixie Pixie was Starksy's main attraction. But Pixie got a little bit too carried away, which must have been something for a snuff film director to say that, and so was instead locked inside the director's attic. Fed the remains of previous actors, Pixie descends into a feral state, much like the namesake of the face that he wears. Fighting him is no easy feat, as he chases Cash around the decrepit loft, eager to carve him up. Showing little intelligence instead of grunting and squealing, Pixie is definitely something you do not want to spend too long staring at. Hiding from the Naked Butcher is definitely the key here, as he won't hesitate to use that rather massive piece of equipment on you if he can get hold of you. Number 4. Limbo The Spider Arachnophobia is pretty bad, and you know what, I'm just gonna say it, spiders are, well, they're pretty gross. I don't care what people say, they're like fuzzy, cute little things with eight huggy arms, they're not, they're just nasty, I don't like them, get them away, get them away from my face right now, don't even pretend to animate one on my face, editor, if you're doing this, just keep it away. And if you need an example of why they're so bad, then just play Limbo. The shadows, the unexpected entanglement in a giant web, those spindly legs unfolding to reveal a giant, sinister-looking arachnid, absolute Blech. Unlike most big nasties, the spider doesn't actually continually chase you in a scripted sequence. Instead, it goes double bastard and can announce itself when you least expect it. This is definitely aided by Limbo being a game based on darkness and shadows, of course. What this means is that you can be nonchalantly navigating your way through this already hellish landscape, thinking that you've escaped, and BAM, it's there, behind a tree or something. Even in death, it's still pretty gross. Because not content with just being dead, our protagonist has to pull one of its legs off and use the torso as a stepping stone. Sorry, but if that was me that had just managed to fell a monstrous multi-eyed nasty with massive fangs, the last thing I would ever want to do is climb over it. Number 3. Bloodborne Winter Lanterns so this is a really tough one here because Bloodborne is filled with enemies that could just be described as ew. The giant brain of Mensis, the amalgamated mess that is the one reborn, even the spindly amygdala or the many-eyed rom the vacuous spider, all of them are just gross. But then I remembered the Winter Lanterns. Whilst others are gross in their own right, there's something just so inherently disgusting about a mass of eyes and brain on a spindly doll dressed body. But it's when they lock these eyes onto you, that's the bit that makes us go all squeamish. Those many eyes widening, the unfolding arms from wherever they're hidden right before it latches onto you and munches you with this kind of mouth-like orifice. The fact that they can cause frenzy to build up on you when they see you is bad enough, as it can ramp up and take a massive chunk of health before they even grab you. But if you're lucky, that's the only thing that will happen. If you're not so lucky, then you're gonna get munched on and it's going to be god awful. So yeah, stay away. Stay out of my eye lines. Just get out of my face. Number 2. Resident Evil 7. Eveline. Old ladies and horror are normally shorthand for things going wrong, granted, but they're not usually gross. Well, 
any more than old people are in general. But of course, this is a Resident Evil title, and as established in this list, expect the grossness to be ramped up. At first glance, the old dear in the Baker household looks comatose and innocent enough. A bit creepy that she does pop up at random intervals, but you know what, we're just gonna go with it. It's only later that you discover that this is Evelyn, the weird psychic girl that's mind warped the Bakers and turned them into these weird abominations. But not content with putting you through Jack blowing his own head apart and witnessing Marguerite become a gross spider abomination, the final battle sees you square up against, well, whatever this is. She's not exactly a harmless old lady anymore, is she? Gigantic and malformed, which is pretty standard for Resident Evil games, she is an enormous, lumbering, squishy mass complete with a hideously malformed face. If you thought that Birkin was bad enough at the end of Resident Evil 2's remake, he has got nothing on the monster granny. And number one, The Last of Us Part 2, The Rat King. The cordyceps fungal infection already produces some pretty shocking real-life results. Clickers, boomers, and everything in between is enough to creep you out, but at the top of this horrible list, there's always a king, specifically The Rat King. A disgusting amalgamation of corpses and fungi, the King is a nightmare to contend with as it relentlessly pursues Abby in the abandoned hospital wing. It's a tense battle as it's capable of snapping her neck like a twig or straight up pummeling her to death depending on its mood. Yet the truly sickest part of the whole ordeal is not what it does to you, but what it does to itself. Despite looking like a singular-minded kind of deal, the King actually splits off what can only be described as one of its subjects to make things harder for you. Watching that nimble little bastard tear itself from the bulk of the king was so visceral that I forgot how to fight back. It is a truly gross spectacle of a fight, that is for sure. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video game enemies that will make you sick. I hope that you ugh, enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. It'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today a lot about video game enemies that will make you sick. Ugh, just gross. So let's end on a more positive note. I hope that you are well, and I hope that you are treating yourself with love and kindness because you bloody well deserve that, my friend. You're a massive ledge in my eyes, and you should start seeing yourself in the same fashion as well. I hope that you succeed in whatever you're getting up to today, and I hope that you go out there building bridges instead of burning them. Because together, well, it makes things a damn sight easier. Now I bet you're sick of me, so I'm gonna let you go and enjoy your day. Have a great one from me to you. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.